Mercy Farm, Kentucky. It's good to be back here in Graves County, right in the middle of western Kentucky. I came here all the way from the left-hand fork of Middle Fork up in Elliott County, and I'm proud to be right here standing in west Kentucky with all of you fine folks. It's great to see you. I want to thank the St. Jerome Catholic Church, Father Venters, for hosting this outstanding event and the impact you're having on this community and far beyond. Mark Wilson, thank you for inviting me back this year 10 years ago. I had the opportunity to emcee this event and what an honor it is here to be here and be able to speak. Folks, I came here today to get out of the shade and get in the heat. I came here today to get on the ground and in the trenches and talk to the good folks of West Kentucky about those policies that matter to them. But I'm also here to remind you today that there's serious issues before us that require serious leadership. I came here today to talk about the progress that has been made over my 30 years of serving in the Kentucky House of Representatives as a member of the Kentucky House Democratic Caucus. It was leadership with the priority of building a stronger economy that provide the types of jobs that our people need and deserve, the type that will lift up the middle class rather than the types of policies that will tear down wagers of our middle class blue collar workers across this commonwealth. Now folks, there's been a lot of chatter and the speaker just said a little bit about it, about over the last little bit that, that we've been business friendly here in the commonwealth of Kentucky. Well, I got news for you. Kentucky's been business friendly. We've been open to business for a long time. And the evidence of that is here for the industry of the manufacturing sector that is located here in Kentucky with Tor Toyota, Ford, and Corvette that is producing automobiles that has led us to the third leading producers of automobiles in America. UPS, Marathon, Logan Aluminum, and other industries that have located here that are producing the types of jobs that our people need and deserve. Over the years, we created the type of economic development incentives that have given past governors and this governor the tools they need to keep Kentucky competitive with other states. Kentucky was selected by Site Selection Magazine, the magazine for the industrial manufacturing sector that has selected Kentucky as the place to come and to grow and to expand. They brought us, they brought us the Governor's Cup in 14, 15, and runner-up in 16. So I would tell you that Kentucky has been business friendly for some time while we have lifted up the middle class across the Commonwealth. House Democrats also help reform education at every level, and the rest of the world knows it. A study just released this past week ranked Kentucky the fifth best public school system in the country. Let's thank our teachers who are in the classroom every day for allowing us to have that ranking. Because of higher ed reform in the 90s, we invested in places like Mary State University and places like the Breathitt Veterinarian Center and created the Kentucky Community Technical College that is allowing us to have a highly skilled and a highly trained for workforce being trained right here at West Community Community and Technical College. This session, and since this session has ended, I've been traveling across Kentucky, and I've been listening to those folks who were impacted by these bad policies that were passed. They're concerned, and they're disappointed about those policies. Policies like the repeal of prevailing wage that is impacting the wages of hardworking Kentuckians as we stand here today. Like my constituent, who works like a borrowed mule climbing out of that bed, gutting it out every day at 4 a.m. in the morning and getting home at 8 at night. He grabs that dinner bucket and that hard hat and them steel-toed shoes year-round, black-topping roads and building roads. He thanked me the other day for standing up for him. He said the repeal of prevailing wage on him would cost his family this year $10,000 in wages and $14,000 in benefits. Folks, that wrong. What do you think about that? That's wrong. That's a $24,000 negative impact on one family, on one individual. Those lost wages are directly out of the pocket of blue-collar, hard-working Kentuckians all across this commonwealth. And then, if that wasn't enough, here come the passage of charter school legislation, an attempt to privatize public education. 
taking your public education dollars out of your child's classroom and moving it to a charter school that can be run by a private for-profit corporation. And the attempt, and the attempt, I had this center, I had this speech just for the senator and he left, and the attempt of a certain U.S. senator to secretly draft a, a bill behind closed doors that would take the health care of 22 to 32 million Americans and another half a million right here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. I, along with my House Democrats, believe we need to lift up all parts of this Commonwealth, like our number one export industry, our number one export industry, the aeronautics and aerospace industry that is creating jobs all over Kentucky. That is the direction we need to go to have the vision. While we stand up for coal and energy and the ag industry, we got to look to diversify. So. If you want to stand with those who will defend public education at every level, if you want to stand with those who will fight for quality health care, if you want to stand with those who will keep the promise of a secure retirement for our first responders, teachers, and public employees, if you believe in standing up for hardworking people who build our communities from the ground up, then I would encourage you to stand with us, stand with the Kentucky House Democratic College, I challenge you to get off the bench and get in the game. Thank you, Fancy Farm.